And tonight on PM Express, the controversial debate over whether it is time to go to the IMF after almost two months of charging the e-levy that was touted as the panacea to our ailing economy. You recall the finance minister warned we will perish if the e-levy did not pass. But after its passage, we're learning today that e-levy is not doing well. Now, you will also recall that the finance minister, Keno Furiata, hinted recently that Ghana will never go to the IMF. Well, his deputy, Dr. John Kuma, gave a hint two weeks ago that we may have to go to the IMF if it becomes necessary. Where do we stand on this as a country? But why is the e-levy struggling? And why is it no longer the solution to our problems? What signals are we picking from the indicators, i.e. our debt-to-GDP ratio, gross international reserve, city-to-dollar ratio, and what are the implications of these signals? Let me share with you a breakdown of what our situation looks like. And um, just on the screen, you're seeing this, the struggling e-levy, time to go to the IMF. Now, this is what triggered the conversation. Gabi Otridakon, uh, he says, I am against an IMF program in principle, no. But um, he says, I am not for an IMF program that throws peanuts at us, but imposes conditions that will end up hurting the poor jobs and businesses more. COVID-19 and war in Ukraine are not of Africa's doing, but more to our doom. A program that pretends it is all our doing is doomed to fail. Now he goes on to say, we do something that will inject confidence in our capacity to ride this heavy storm, and that something should happen pretty quickly. Are you against an IMF program? Then he poses that question, and that has generated this whole debate. So this is what John Kuma, Deputy Finance Minister, said. If it's bringing the economy back to life becomes impossible, then it is the only alternative to salvage our economy. But where we are now, we think we are in the position to salvage the economy or to try the homegrown policy we are adopting. That is Dr. John Kuma, who is a deputy finance minister. Now, this is the finance minister himself, Ken Furiata. He says, he, uh, government's decision not to seek a bailout from the IMF, that's what he's always uh, said, despite the current economic challenges. Now, look at the picture. The last time Ghana went to the IMF, uh, these are uh, the uh, indicators that led us to the uh, IMF. If you like, depreciating currency, that is the CD to dollar, widening current account and budget deficit. You have rampant inflation, you have large civil service salaries and falling commodity prices. Those were the indicators in 2015. Let's do a comparison, 2015 and 2022, and see if the indicators are still the same. And this is coming from Bank of Ghana's summary data. Now, the exchange rate by May in 2015, city had lost 19.9% against the dollar. Let's put same period to 2022, and then you will realize that it had lost 15.8% to the dollar. So definitely it's not the same. Inflation by May in 2015, you had 16.9%. In 2022, you have 27.6%. Now you, you look at gross international reserves, and this is very important in terms of revenue generation. Now, if you look at 2015, we were at, what, 4.8 billion, three months of import cover. Now, in 2022, 8.3 billion, 3.7 months of import cover. So you look at these two, and then they are not the same because it has actually doubled up here. And look at that to GDP ratio. In 2015, you had 66.5%. In 2022, you have 78.78 percent uh, tax to GDP ratio by March, 4.2 percent in 2015, 2.6 percent in 2022. First quarter GDP growth rate 10.8 percent, and then in 2022 you have 3.3 percent. So definitely the indicators are, are not looking the same, or you look at the situations, they may not be the same. What does this mean? We have the people who will understand this terrain 
and they can explain to us what this means to the economy. What did government do then in 2015? Limited hiring and wage increases. And these are the things that came with the IMF loan. Elimination of subsidies for utilities and petroleum products and crackdown on tax evasion and rationalized exemptions. These were the uh, conditions that came with the IMF loan. Let's look at the other things that happened in 2015. Tax on luxury cars, increased taxes on high earners. So all of these were conditionalities that the IMF wanted us to do to ensure that we really qualified for the money and that we'll put the money to good use. Now, the sinking fund was introduced to address rising debt stock and also to pay long-term bonds annually. Now, look at this description. And this is the provision, first quarter of 2022. That, this is our outlook for 2022. And if you look at tax revenue, this is the breakdown. Taxes on income and property, and you, you have 38.3 billion. Um, that's the amount that uh, we are looking to generate. Now, first quarter, we've generated 5.9 billion out of the projected 38.8 billion. If you look at excise tax, we, we are looking forward to 6.2, that's our target. We've, we have 1.3 billion in the first quarter. And if you look at VAT, we have 14.5 billion. We've generated 2.9 billion in the first quarter. Look at NHIL, look at Get Fund. Um, you realize that we've not met our target. Look at E Levy, the almighty E Levy, 6.9 billion to be generated by end of the year. Zero. We've not generated anything. Uh, this is because for the first quarter, we could not generate anything from E Levy because of the controversies that surrounded its passage. Now, in the second quarter that it was finally passed, we are being told that we've generated only 10%, which is shortfall of the target, the monthly target. So what is accounting for this? It is what we are going to be discussing tonight, the struggling E-Levy. Is it time to go to the IMF?